Hello everyone, this is Shea here. Welcome to my channel, Share Space. In the last chapter, we have seen how Joseph and his close friend Samuel were talking about their plans and dreams. Samuel planned to join the local revolutionary movement against the Romans and Herod. But Joseph wanted to get married and settle down. As the two men were talking and as Joseph was watching through his doorway, his eyes caught something. He looked out into the street as if he had seen some wonderful vision. Only his right hand, huge and flexible, reached out and seized the elbow of his friend. I have already found her, he confided. She is very young and very different from all other women in the world. Come out of your trance, Joseph, and tell me how this girl is so different, said Samuel. She is not as any of the others are. That is all I know what to tell you. Look, Samuel, I was sure of it. She is coming towards us now. See her with the empty red jug on her head. Samuel strode to the doorway and shaded his eyes with his hand. Don't stare, admonished severely Joseph. I will admit that her walk is more than ordinarily graceful, announced Samuel over his shoulder. Everything about her is more than ordinary, murmured Joseph, who was so in love with her. The carpenter's head was turned to one side and he was looking under the upraised arm of Samuel and there was still that distant look in the blue eyes as if he were enrap enraptured by the strains of music. The shadowed street was almost empty as a girl came towards them from the narrow pavement. Dark hair framed her pale face above the light blue mantle and the intense blue eyes were set wide apart. She walked in grace and beauty. Joseph, said Samuel, lowering his voice, there may be something in what you say, he said thoughtfully. That girl is somehow different. Yes, she is. Can it be the expression? It is most unusual. It is. Why, look, it has me stammering. Man, it, it, it is. Samuel lowered his hand. Never have I seen such serenity on any face, he acknowledged. It gives me, my friend, a strange sort of feeling. He looked after the girl searchingly as she passed, eyes straight before her. Arms lifted gracefully, fingers spread against the red water jock. What can it be that sets her apart? Samuel fumed. Then he shook himself and with forced heartiness turned in the shop again. No wonder you won't go with me to Jerusalem, he barked. Tell me, has that maiden promised? Joseph sank dismally on the bench. I have never even spoken to her, he admitted. With a boisterous laugh, Samuel walked over and laid his hairy hand on the head of Joseph. Shy as ever, Joseph, he teased. You have to pluck up your courage, boy. You're not too young, you know. And the bucks of this village are not blind. Don't be losing time. Joseph looked up with the air that gave a sudden strength to his face. I am not afraid, he said quietly. Samuel snorted loudly. It came to him then, with a sense of obscure annoyance, that the gentle people of this world are a strong and obstinate mystery. There was conviction in the words of Joseph. Tell me at least one thing, Joseph. Do you know her parents? Not yet, said Joseph. They have just come from Jerusalem. Have you never learned her name? Her name, Joseph looked up. Oh, yes, I know that. Tell me then before I go. Her name, said Joseph, is Mary. This ends the conversation between the two men. Samuel left and Joseph is left dreaming of his Mary. <laughs>